Hi, Carolyn Doobie here with August Colorful Jelly Print Party. I am making my own kind of stamps or textury things to use on the jelly plate using um, sticky backed foam because I had some scraps. And the pieces I'm going to be putting with it are a self adhesive kind, like these Velcro circles that I found that called to me. And these are like silicone rubber feet that you put on the bottoms of things, kind of from a weird hardware junk store that I found. Um, but I, I love perfect circles because I can't really cut them myself, so I'll buy those. But these do have a sticky back already on them, but I'm sure it's not as strong as I want. So by putting the sticky back of the canvas with the sticky back of whatever I'm sticking on it, that should give it a nice strong adhesion and will hold up for me. So I am just going to start sticking on my little Velcro circles. I noticed as I was doing this that they were not going to line up perfectly because I'm not going to spend the time to be very precise. So I started purposely making them a little bit off. That way it wouldn't look like there was, you know, that's one or two out of place. Now they all kind of look a little wonky and that makes me happy with these little Velcro circles. I am only putting one kind of Velcro circle on this one stamp because they are different heights. Um, and so for this one, and they'll give you a little different look too because of the way they react with the paint. So leave it hanging off the edge, who cares? And don't worry about the sticky part still being exposed. The paint will take care of that and it won't be sticky for long. So I've got those, a few extra circles for later. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the bigger silicone circles that I have. And I want some space between these. The little Velcro ones were kinda small, but these I want a little more openness for something I wanna try. And I'm trying to be random about this, but <laughs> that was really hard for me. Um, and I will say that when you have sticky to sticky, that wherever you put it down, that's where it goes. There's no going back from that thing. It's Once it's down, it's down. And so I've got that done. You can also peel off the backing from it. Um, and that'll actually make a kind of, I'm pushing it along my shirt so it's not quite as sticky getting some of the lint on it. And I'll maybe use that sometime as a, like a stencil on my jelly plate. And for this next one, I'm going to use the smaller feet with the bigger feet. It would take me forever to fill in a whole thing with those little ones, so I'm not going to spend that much time on it. And again, I'm thinking this is going to do something interesting, so I'm going to play with it and see what happens. So I've got my jelly plate. Yes, it is a dirty jelly plate because I don't like to clean things. I'm going to put a fairly heavy coat of blue paint on here. Why? Because that's what squirted it out. So I'm gonna go with it. Sometimes I squirt a little, sometimes I squirt a lot. This one is gonna be nice and juicy and I'm gonna clean that brayer off right there in the journal that I have waiting so that I don't waste any of the paint and I'm building up layers on an art journal page to use in the future. I am gonna use one of the larger stamps that I just made with the foam. And when I push this down, watch it slide. You see how that wiggles around? Wasn't really my intention but any kind of angle with this much paint and things slip. But if I go straight up and down, it didn't slip and move around at all. As I'm pushing down, I can feel the, oh, you see where the blue paint is? I've got the circle and then all the places where the foam actually touched the blue paint and pulled that up, that's gonna create some really great variation in there. So I've got parts with heavy paint, parts with light paint, and then where the circles are, you can see where the paint was completely removed. But I was seeing eyeballs in this, so out come the handy dandy Q-tips. And I'm going to make circles within the circle. And again, I really keep seeing eyeballs with all this stuff. And, and I love eyeballs for some reason. So <laughs> I'm going to just go in there and clean up. If your Q-tip gets kind of grubby or you get a lot of paint on it, it won't remove as much paint. So I just grab another Q-tip. Now what I'm going to do is use a catalyst blade tool. And it's, it's just drawing. You could use the end of a paintbrush. Uh, just drawing some other lines around the circles to really make my eyeballs pop. So they're going to look like big old wide eyeballs. There's going to be paint left on the catalyst blade because I've been wiping paint off. And I'm just going to wipe that on that journal page right there and let it build up the layers there. At this point, I want to see what I've got. I'm kind of want to see what, see what it looks like. So I'm going to put on some white cardstock and 110 pound weight. Get it at like the office store. You can get it off Amazon. Not fancy paper, super cheap paper. And there, oh, I love my eyeballs. Love all the color variation that I've got just because of that big stamp. But there's still more paint. So I'm going to grab another piece of white cardstock and I'm going to pull this up. 
and there's less paint so I have to push down a little bit longer to get all the paint to come up oh I like my eyeballs there too like that the red was coming up and it gives it a little more depth and dimension makes it interesting so I put down some green paint and I did not use as much as last time why because I didn't squeeze as hard there's not really a rhyme or reason at times for how much paint I squirt out it's kind of what comes out of the bottle did clean my brayer off right over there on the art journal page it's going to build up some layers into who knows what as I'm using one of the velcro stamps I'm going to create um, a pattern covering the entire jelly plate so one small stamp that you make can actually fill the entire jelly plate so size of your stamp doesn't matter doesn't matter what size your jelly plate is you can get them all to work now I'm gonna grab the other um, stamp that I made from the velcro but I'm not gonna be as patterned with it I'm gonna kinda move it around and sort of break the rules that I had for my stripes just to create some interest the harder I push down if I give it a little bit of wiggle it's gonna pull up more of the paint so now comes time you can't really see a whole lot of pattern on here and but I promise it's there I'm gonna print on a tag this time and with this um, you can print on anything that's not glossy or coated paper so tags work fantastically when I pulled this up I was blown away by how wonderful and plain and simple yet complex it was I've got it's pretty much just a green you don't see a lot of pattern to it but those circles there's just little bits within it that would make it an awesome background color for something so I'm gonna see what I cut on the second one I'm kind of wondering if I'm gonna get the same thing or something a little different same kind of got a little bit of the blue coming up so you can see it from the circle so that little bit of residue adds so much to these things on a very subtle level if I tried to make this kind of background if I was pulling out a paintbrush oh I like that one too Lots more. I'm just going to clean up all the wet paint on this one and just kind of let it build up on that tag and see where it goes. So not a really bold pattern, but a wonderful background, a wonderful place to start. And it's again, if I'd pulled out a paintbrush and tried to paint that on, I could not have gotten that look at all. So this time I'm playing with a turquoise kind of color. And with this one, it's a more opaque paint and I'm gonna clean it right off in that art journal not paying attention to how those colors are building up but I do promise they are building up nicely for this one I'm gonna use the circles the big and the little circles together there's lots of sticky spots on that on that uh, foam so oh, that's just an oops it won't matter and I'm gonna push this down and I'm willing to bet it's gonna do something similar to what the big circles did in the dark blue so I'm gonna get some variation I'm hoping I'm gonna have some circles in there I'm hoping so fingers crossed that this goes as planned because it doesn't always go as planned and hey it did go as planned so you can see where I've got some variation in the color there I'm actually just gonna take this print straight as it is I'm not gonna take the q-tips to it or the blades or anything like that and I'm just gonna pull it up and this is wonderfully subtle you can see bits of the green you've got the turquoise there and I've got the circles so a more subtle background than my big blue one with the big giant eyeballs but still very useful because it is so wonderfully subtle really like that There's still plenty of paint on this jelly plate and why waste paint I'm actually gonna take the blue circle one and I'm gonna put it with this one and see what happens as I layer up those colors this could be really ugly or it could be really great or somewhere in the middle and you know what I'm really happy with this one it's starting you can see where the blue gets pushed back in places it's creating those layers frankly that only the way the jelly plate can create those layers so yay that one worked so I've got a layer of dark blue on the jelly plate I'm using the big circles again and I'm gonna push down make if I want it to go fairly straight I need to push straight down if I go at an angle it's gonna slide on me and I actually really don't want this to slide so I'm gonna push it down I'm gonna get as much contact as I can between the foam and the paint because that's gonna give me that variation that I really like by having the circles spread far apart and anytime now I think I'll be done there we go so I've got my circles but I'm gonna do something a little different with them and I've got my q-tips and they're sticking together and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make sort of a big floral pattern with this q-tips are great at removing paint 
but I will say that once I end up with a lot of paint on them, they don't pull up the paint as well. So that's why I flip to the other end of the Q-tip. Uh, when the Q-tip is completely full, then I will actually just get a whole nother Q-tip because Q-tips are like the cheapest thing I've got in my studio. So I'm okay using a few of those. And I can definitely tell when, like you can see the paint just isn't coming up with that Q-tip. So I'm just going to grab another one and whoop, there, beautiful paint removal on that one. Cool part about this is you can really see your pattern that you're building because as it removes the paint, the white underneath, the whatever paper you've got underneath your jelly plate starts to show through. So think of all the possible patterns that you could make this way. And I'm really liking this flower thing. So now the question is, what do I put it on? You know, I really like those flowers. I think I'm going to grab those wonderful green tags that had just that wonderful subtle background that was interesting. And I'm going to stick it on there to make the background of my flowers and we'll see what it does. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. The green is just popping underneath it. Really, really, really happy with that. Did I mention I was really happy with that one? And with the second one, we'll see if it works. Ooh, worked twice. Loving it actually worked twice. So, and I say actually because, you know, it's not like I can really control what the jelly plate does. So now I'm going to try that flower on the other subtle background and see what look I get. They happen to be papers that I have around and I'm just going to keep adding layers to them and I'll stop adding layers to it when I'm happy with it. Let's see what we get. So this time some of the red from way back actually made an appearance and that creates a different look than what I was expecting. And you know what? I actually like it. I like how that dark pops in there. I wouldn't have put the dark in there myself, but I really like how that looks. Now that I'm all finished with these, there are parts that are still sticky. So what I'm going to do is just take some acrylic paint and I'm going to paint over the sticky parts and they won't be sticky anymore then once they're dry.